Hey, what's going on guys? It's Spartan Gaming here, and we are back today on Gears of War 4, and I'm here joined with Mr. F and Husa 57 We're actually going to do a horde tips for tricks and for noobs. It's all at the same time. Tips, tricks, and for all of you noobs out there who don't know how to play it. We're all there at some point, and now I'm here with FN, and we're going to help you learn how to do it. So, how are you doing there, FN? Uh, we'll be doing better once everybody learns how to play Horde. Yeah, right? So now, you know, hopefully you don't join up into matches running around being an engineer while you're actually a scout. Uh, so, let's jump right into it. The first thing we're going to go over is setting up your classes and just the base game of regular things. Like, this screen essentially right here, all the customization, we're going to set it up. Uh, first thing, make sure you try to utilize your bounties as much as possible because they are really useful. Uh, just getting the XP and the credits to buy boxes. Um, it's also, you know, it's pretty nice to get the boxes. It's always nice to get free stuff. So just try and keep your eyes on that and utilize that as much as possible. And then moving after that, the fundamental things when you're getting into Horde is having a scout and an engineer. I'm playing it as an engineer and FN is playing as a scout. These two things are like a must whenever playing this game. Like, it is a 100% you need these two. They are game changing if you do not. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and go over the engineer real quick, and FN's going to go over the scout once I'm done. So, getting into it, the engineer right here, he's going to do exactly what it sounds like. He's going to buy, build, repair, blah, 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 all of that right there. And the big thing that he has right here is the repair boost. 40% efficiency, I believe it's 20% at first, and you can upgrade your cards the more of them you get. Uh, you can buy you can buy the boxes, and you can get these from the boxes, and then after that, if you have multiples, you upgrade them. Super, super useful. Next, you can get the cost discounts, which are really nice, especially for the man turrets, like this one right here, 16% discount on turrets. Uh, I would recommend that next. After that, I would say maybe barrier cost or turret health most likely turret health over barrier cost um, and then after that there's a few other things that would be better um, but we're gonna get you know get through that so fn if you want to go ahead and explain your scout i'm sure you'll do a lot better than i do <laughs> nah you did good all right when it comes to the classes specifically the scout this is arguably thrown up in the air whether it's the most important class or not pretty much 50 50 between an engineer and scout so for your scout as you can tell mine's a little bit upgraded he's he's on steroids uh he's max level 10 so i have all the card slots available even if you are a level one scout you're going to want the deposit bonus this is pretty much the most crucial card for the scout uh, at level five you get 50 percent bonus on all the power that you turn into the fabricator you're also going to want the pickup distance, which increases the radius that you can pick up power uh, at level 5, which is max. It's 500%. So basically, you can just run down a pathway and pick up all the power that's around you. Your third card that's a necessity is the health boost at level 5 that gives you 100% health. So since you're not going to be in cover, you're going to be running around and constantly getting your ass shot that extra health is just a no-brainer. Your last two cards are dependent upon your team and difficulty setting. For the most part, you're gonna want shotgun damage, which at level five is a increase by 100% damage. And then for your fifth and last card, if you have it, the epic card Rage is one of the best ones that the scout can use because you gain 15% of melee and shotgun damage returned as health. So basically it allows you to be a walking tank. Ooh, fancy. Sounds just pretty useful. <laughs> so just a quick heads up, this, all this information we're giving you is based off of anything under insane. If you want to know about tips in pretty much how to play Horde on insane, uh, or the harder difficulty between hardcore and insane, uh, there will be a link down below to FN's video. He's doing something similar to this, but he's going to do a better job with more complicated stuff. He plans better than I do. So, <laughs> anyways, we're going to be moving on. Like I said earlier about the engineer, only the engineer will be buying, repairing, uh, anything like that is the engineer's job. He's going to do his sole purpose is to just support and buy, build, repair, all of that. Not the scout, not the assault, nothing. Mostly because of the 
turret cost discount and other discounts that you will get along the road and obviously the repair boost you want to try and save as much of those points as you possibly can and then this is obviously for the scout as well only the scout picks up the money don't don't let anybody else pick up the money it's a no-brainer about that one as well obviously because the scout gets the bonus for the while the round is going and then his drop off bonus now about that is there's a card that is a deposit bonus every time the scout puts the money into the bank it gets a bonus so you get a little bit more you know you get a little bit more of the the ching ching if you know what i'm saying and uh, this leads me to my last tip inside of the setting up category <clears throat> while the round is going and when i say while the round is going i mean while there are still enemies on the map you get double the amount of credits you pick up so while the scout is running around you know while there's still a couple people left on the map or enemies, I shouldn't say people. Um, you want to have the scout try and go that last couple people on the map and get those monies. So that's it. We're going to go ahead and move into the match now, and we will see you guys here in a minute. So peace, guys. Alrighty, guys, so we're back inside of the match now. Um, FN and I are just set up our fabricator. And we're going to go ahead and take care of some of these DB. Now, moving into the match category here. Some of the first things you really <clears throat> you really want to worry about is that um, you know, starting off, the matches are made up of ten rounds or five sets of ten rounds. Obviously, it's fifty rounds in total. So, you know, if you know how to do basic second grader math, that's that. Um, and like I said a little bit earlier, I mentioned it. I don't know if you caught that or not. But at the end of every round, you want to save one to two enemies so that the scout can get all of the credits that are on the ground. Now, in this case, in the early, early rounds, FN's picking up all the money as he goes. I may have picked up a little bit on accident. I don't think I did. I might have, though. It's possible. Yeah, see, look at that. I'm holding 72. I fucked up already, guys. But, um, leave one or two shame between on one and three spark. enemies. I you know, shame. Uh, between one and three enemies is pretty ideal. Um, so you have a little bit of room to spare in case one is trapping somebody. You can kill him. Um, so that's when you usually want to have your scout go out and get all the monies and bring it back for that deposit bonus as well as the wave bonus for picking it up so that's gonna pretty much sum up the match I will see you guys back here pretty shortly once we get a few of the defenses set up and we will go over all of the building and defenses so thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in two seconds alrighty guys so we're gonna go ahead and move straight into the building section of our tips and tricks um, starting off with the walls Whenever you do make these walls, and uh, you typically want to have at least a few of them, FN's out there killing stuff for us while I can show these for you, so thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. <laughs> He's doing what he loves best. Uh, typically, whenever you, you want to have a couple of these, at least, um, just guarding around the area that you're set up. Now, that's exactly the thing I'm going to mention right now, is keep them close by, keep them close at hand to your little home base or to wherever you're set up, um, just for the fact that you're going to be wasting money otherwise, they're going to break too quickly and you won't be able to repair them as easily. And those are some pretty important things. And these are pretty nice to have close by it as well. So, nextly, try not, when you're getting your weapon lockers, don't don't have like six of them. Don't, don't. Just, it's, it's not necessary to have like six of them. It's really not. If you're going to get weapon lockers, you only need maybe one or two and just try to upgrade them as you go. If you really, really desperately need them, like 100%, which you won't, but maybe get a third. But like I said, try to just upgrade them. Otherwise, you're just you're pretty much wasting your money. Otherwise, now we're gonna go ahead and move into the turrets, right over here, the MG Sentry. Um, these are pretty shitty, to be honest with you. They are short-range sentry guns, and they don't really get very many kills for you. Um, but they're good if you're in a really tight spot and you want to have just something as a little bit of a backup. Uh, that'd be the way to go, but otherwise they're not really worth it. They cost a decent amount, and like I said, they don't really get kills. Uh, after doing a few things of or a few games of Wave 50, I don't think I've seen one get any kills. To be quite honest. Um, then the next turret, which is the sock, the, sh the sock sentry. Does it have socks on it? No, the shock sentry, right here. This is a longer range turret and actually does a little shock stun effect. Obviously, you could probably guess that one. Uh, it's pretty useful. This one actually gets some kills and that shock effect to slow down and stun the enemies 
is pretty useful. Uh, especially when you get to higher waves and you're getting tons of them swarming you, just having them there to go ahead and just, you know, just be like, no, stop, you're not coming over here, stay away from my walls. Uh, it's pretty nice, and they get kills. I've actually noticed them get a, a few kills, you know, between maybe 10 and 15 on uh, up to wave 50. Now, that's, you know, after building them, obviously I didn't build them on wave 1. Um, but, socks, shock sentries, I would actually recommend they seem pretty decent. Uh, next is the decoy. Now, I would say the decoy is practically useless. Like, there's not much of a use for the decoy, unless maybe one, depending on the map you're on, just to uh, try and avoid the, um, the boom shots or one of the bosses. It's nice to have that to try and avoid getting destroyed by those. But besides having one, they're pretty much useless, so uh, try not to waste your money on that one. Oh, this dude just whacked me in the face. Rude as fuck. Uh, so, moving on from there, lastly, which is pretty much the best, not even pretty much, it is the best thing, is the man turret. It's the biggest turret, it's the most expensive, and it is worth it. Depending on how many people you have, you want to have between one and three. So if I was playing by myself, I would just have one. If I was playing with FN, we'd have two. Even if we had a full team of five, you probably wouldn't have five. Typically between one and three. So if you have five people, maybe just have four of them. Uh, but they're pretty useful, and they're best used against bosses, I'd say. Although they are pretty useful um, high rounds when you're just getting bombarded by a lot of them. It's always pretty useful to hop on that and just gun a few of them down and then get back to it afterwards. So, that will lead me into our next se next and last session. Session? We're in this session now. I'll, I'll leave this last one for FN so he can get the monies for it. But our last section here is going to be for the bosses. Now, yes, the bosses, they are depending on which one can be pretty tricky, but I'm gonna tell you guys about every single one of them. Um, and these are opinionated, kinda. Some of them are opinionated, some of them are factual, uh, between FN and I. So the first one, this is gonna be between easy and hardest. So starting off with the easiest, the Kestrel, or as uh, myself and SG Active call it, the Valkyrie, cause it's like a little helicopter thing. That thing is probably the easiest. All you have to do is aim for the two engines on either side of it. And just try and avoid the missiles it launches every once in a while, and you're pretty much golden, like, right there. That's that's it. Uh, so moving on to the next one is the carrier. That thing has a ton of armor, and it's very slow, so while it's walking over to you, uh, just try not to waste your ammo, really. Don't bother with it until it opens up and tries to shoot out the little explosive flying death bomb things. Uh, and then once it opens up, you want to just unload everything you have into it, and then when it closes back up, you wait, obviously, until it opens back up again, and you should be good if you follow that strategy. Should be. Don't don't hold me to that. So, that'll put us to the next one, which is the Brumac. Uh, that is the big giant walking frog with miniguns, <laughs> as I like to say. But uh, he's relatively easy if you just have somewhere where you can get into cover in case you're taking too much fire. Um, and then for taking him down, just aim for the little blisters or warts that are on him. Just aim for those and you'll do the most damage, and occasionally he will shoot missiles and rockets at you. Try and avoid those. If you follow all those guidelines, you should be solid with that. So, <clears throat> moving on to the last one, which is the biggest, most annoying pain in the ass there is of the bosses, which is the Snatcher, and I've had the worst experience. The first match I ever played, I got absolutely destroyed by one, so I can attest to this. <clears throat> they are the worst. So these guys are pretty quick. And they don't have a ton of health, but they're a boss, so they obviously they have a decent amount of health. Um, now, depending on the map, they will be able to jump either across the map or halfway across the map, which is really unnerving, considering the fact that if you go down, they will eat you, and they will run away to the end of the map, and pretty much just make you die until that wave is done, or the match is done if you're on like wave 50 or whatever. That really sucks. Besides that already being really annoying and difficult, this guy has a little tail attack that will instant down you, and of course he'll try and eat you after that, as well as two AoE attacks, and one of them will also insta-kill you. <clears throat> so, trying to kill this thing, you're probably like, oh god, Spartan, is there any way to kill it? I mean, you said it's got a decent amount of health, but it's not crazy. Well, just try and shoot it in the belly, that's the best I can tell you. Um, that's that's the best way to go is just try and shoot it in the belly and gun it down as quickly as you can and don't let it get close to you and if it does then cry just just cry that's all I can tell you 
or shoot it more until you die. Ooh, that rhymed. Oh boy. <laughs> so yeah, that, that pretty you much sums up. You could also buy some more uh, man turrets too, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. Those man turrets, those things will slaughter them if you got a bunch of them trained on them. But um, yeah, that pretty much concludes our tips and tricks for noobs on the horde mode. This is, like I said, the basic version for all of the difficulties under insane. If you want to see a more advanced one on exactly what to do and how to do it for harder difficulties, there will be a link down below to FN's video. So you guys should for sure check that out. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember to smash that like button, leave a comment if you want to see some more tips and tricks and things like that. And I will see you about trying to get some more set up. So, besides that, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. As well as FN. So, I'm not saying you have to, but like, I strongly recommend, like me dying apparently, but I strongly recommend going and checking out his uh, channel because he does some pretty good videos. And it is worth checking out. So, thank you guys for watching. I'll see y'all next time. Peace, guys. Jesus. Keep dreaming, asshole.